Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to the witnesses for being here. Um, I think it's safe to say that, that all of you are here today because you are opposed to government censorship. Is that, is that right? Have I got that broadly correct? Okay, we can agree on that much. Um, book banning is a form of government censorship. Is that broadly speaking correct? Professor Knox, let me, you're, you're an expert in this. Let me just ask you, um, book banning is a problem under the First Amendment because it's the government telling private individuals, authors, what have you, what they can and cannot write, telling the public what they can and cannot read. Is that broadly speaking correct? Yes, that's correct. So now what if, what if the books were digital only? Could the government ban them then? So no, no hard copies, no, no physical copies, it's just digital books. Could the government engage in book banning then under the First Amendment? No problem. No, that's about f a format of the particular book, and that really doesn't matter when it comes to whether or not government is banning a book. Okay, what, what, if, what if the government made a list of authors whose books it wanted banned, and also went to all of the publishing houses in America, the government did, and said, do not publish the books by any of these authors or we will punish you. Is that a problem in the First Amendment? My hope is that the government would not be involved in the decisions of a private company. Good. I would hope so, too. But apparently that is not the case in the United States of America today under this administration, because the hypotheticals I've just given you aren't hypotheticals at all. They've happened. And we know that they are happening. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals just ruled in a case, Missouri versus Biden. I'm sure you're all familiar with this. It's going to go down, I think, as a landmark case in the worst possible way in First Amendment law, because what the Court of Appeals found is that the White House, not just the federal government, but the White House actively coerced every major social media platform in America. Let me say that again. Every major social media platform in America to ban speech that the White House did not like. What are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about speech on the COVID-19 pandemic, speech on the 2022 congressional elections, speech related to mask mandates, speech related to vaccines, what did the White House do? Well, over a period of years, they met with on a regular basis the leaders of social media companies and demanded that the speech they did not like be taken down. They further demanded that these same social media companies amplify the White House's speech. Amazing. So take down all of this speech that we don't like, amplify our own speech. Unbelievable. What kind of speech are we talking about? Well, for example, not just public officials, but parents. Here's an example from my state, the state of Missouri. This is, I'm reading you from the opinion here. One parent who posted on nextdoor.com, which is a site operated by Facebook, posted an online petition to encourage his school to remain mask optional, found that his posts were removed without notifying him, and his friends never saw them. Another parent in the same school district who objected to mask mandates for school children responded to Dr. Fauci on Twitter and promptly received a warning from Twitter that his account would be banned if he did not delete the tweets criticizing Dr. Fauci's approach to mask mandates. These objections, amazingly, these, this censorship was taken at the direct behest of the federal government, the direct behest of the Biden administration. Professor Knox, is this a violation of the First Amendment? Only a judge can make that determination. And a judge has. I'm glad you said that. Multiple judges. The district court, federal district court, said there was a direct First Amendment violation. Court of Appeals, unanimously, three-judge panel, unanimously said direct First Amendment violation. I can't think of another time in American history when the President of the United States, and I say that advisedly, because the record reflects that White House officials were sending emails and communications to these companies saying that the President himself wanted the censorship. 
So you've got the government doing exactly what Professor Knox said is not permitted under the First Amendment, directly coercing the speech of private parties, and not just one or two authors, but parents all across the country, unprecedented in the history of this nation. So I'm glad we're having this hearing today. I hope that we will have more like it to expose the censorship happening at the highest levels of our government. Mr. Chairman, I'd ask that this, this opinion, this judgment by the Fifth Circuit, Missouri versus Biden, be entered into the record in full. Without objection. I will leave it there. I know there are other Senator Kennedys here who want to ask questions, but I just want to say for the record that this kind of censorship is un-American. It is unconstitutional. And I hope it will go down as a sad chapter in American history that we can close here and now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Hawley. Senator Kennedy.